Today the topic of our discussion is the causes of primary amenorrhea which is defined as the absence of menses at age 15 years in the presence or absence of normal growth and secondary sexual characteristics. For primary amenorrhea topic, I would recommend Asha Chohan book of Obstetric and Gynecology. And in order to understand the main causes of primary amenorrhea, let us understand these four groups of disorders. First of all, absent secondary sexual characteristics. Secondly, normal secondary sexual characteristics. Third, the heterosexual development. And fourth, the constitutional development. Now, we would divide the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics into two main groups. The group with the short stature and the group with the normal stature. So, in case of the sh short stature, like primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics and short stature, we have further two groups. The first is that of the hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, second is ovarian failure. So, in hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction, which is in fact the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, we would include the conditions like first of all hydrocephalus. Secondary, the craniopharyngioma, panhypopituitarism, and when it comes to ovarian failure, it is basically the hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism, and it includes the conditions like Turner syndrome, mosaic Turner, and mixed gonadal dysgenesis. Now, coming to the normal stature means the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristic but the normal stature we have two main groups two main deviant first is hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction which is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism and that include the isolated GnRH deficiency secondly the Coleman syndrome hyperprolactinemia excessive exercise weight loss or anorexia nervosa next come ovarian failure which is hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism and that include true gonadal dysgenesis premature menopause galactosemia so far we have studied the primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics and two main deviants like short stature and the normal stature. Now we are going to discuss the primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics and that include anatomical abnormalities, androgen insensitivity syndrome, resistant ovary syndrome, polycystic ovarian disease and prolactinoma. Now, which anatomical abnormalities do we suspect in patients with primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics? That might be first of all, imperforate hymen, secondly, transverse vaginal septum, then absent vagina and functioning uterus, and absent vagina with a non-functioning uterus. Coming to the third main deviant, that is the heterosexual development, and that include the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, 5 alpha reductase deficiency, ovarian adrenal tumor, absent antimolarian factor, true hermaphrodites. The last group of primary amenorrhea is that of the constitutional delay. Now, this is a whole summary of all the causes of primary amenorrhea. Let us revise again. So, we basically divide the primary amenorrhea causes into four main groups. Primary amenorrhea, with the absent secondary sexual characteristics as you can see in the blue table. Secondly, the primary amenorrhea with the normal secondary sexual characteristics as you can see in the yellow box and in the green box you can see the heterosexual development and in the orange box you can see the constitutional development. Now, the primary amenorrhea with the absent secondary sexual characteristics are further divided into the group with the, normal, with the short stature and the group with the normal stature. So, the group with the short stature means short stature with the primary amenorrhea and absent secondary sexual characteristics. We have two further deviant. First is hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction. Secondly, ovarian failure. So, in hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction means the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. We have conditions like hydrocephalus, craniopharyngioma, and panhypopituitarism. Second group is that of the ovarian failure, which is hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism and that include the Turner syndrome, mosaic Turner and mixed gonadal dysgenesis. Then the primary amenorrhea with absent secondary sexual characteristics of the normal stature group 
we have two further remain. First is hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction and secondly ovarian failure. So, in a hypothalamic pituitary dysfunction means the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism include isolated GnRH defic deficiency, Kalman syndrome, hyperprotectinemia, excessive exercise, weight loss, anorexia nervosa. And in ovarian failure, we have two gonadal dysgenesis, premature menopause and galactosemia. Normal secondary sexual characteristics are divided into anatomical abnormalities like imperforate hymen, transverse vaginal septum, absent vagina and functioning uterus, and absent vagina and non-functioning uterus. And the second group is that of the androgen insensitivity, resistant ovary syndrome, polycystic ovarian disease, and prolactinoma. Third group is that of the heterosexual development, which include the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, 5 alpha reductase deficiency, ovarian adrenal tumor, absent antimolarian factor, and true hermaphrodite. And fourth group is that of the constitutional development. I would like to end my presentation with this quote, and that is hard times are often blessing in disguise. Let go and let life strengthen you. No matter how much it hurt, hold your head up and keep going. This is an important lesson to remember when you are having a rough day, a bad month or a crapper year. A crappy year. Truth be told, sometimes the hardest lessons to learn are the ones we need the most. So thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Allah Hafiz.